Hello folks, welcome. Filming in 1080. Please adjust your YouTube player accordingly. And uh, for the folks that are brand new to Linux Mint 22 Cinnamon, a uh, special welcome to you. Uh, today I'm going to do a deep dive into that little updater shield on your panel bar. And uh, I think every user should be aware of how to do some tips and tricks there. So the dude's looking in his computer, he's looking for information. We sometimes need to do that. Got this uh, wallpaper from wallpaperswide.com. You can actually par probably see part of the name right through my panel bar. Subscription key is found right about where my mouse is twirling. If you want to subscribe, 400 and uh, some odd videos on all kinds of tips and tricks. So the first thing I'm going to do is right click on this shield and turn it off. Oops. All right, to turn this back on, just type in UP. And then I'm going to hit the X in the corner and it still stays. So I'm going to right click on the icon and do a refresh. What that's going to do is check for updates. You can do this at any time. If you feel you need to check for updates, just right click and do a refresh. If you see a dot, then open this, click it and open it up. I'm using a desktop computer, fairly standard keyboard and computer mouse with a scroll wheel on it. So I'm going to right click with my mouse, information. All right, maybe too much uh, information for some, but there you go. Right clicking on the icon, preferences. I'm going to talk a little bit deeper on the automation side, but more importantly, I'm going to talk uh, first about basic options. So the interface, hide the update manager after applying updates. You may want to turn that on and off. The default is off. Only show the tray icon when the updates are available or in case of errors. So if you don't want to see that thing, click. Auto refresh, you probably want that. Every, well, it does it 10 minutes and then after that it's two hours in case you're logged in a long time. Notifications, I would probably leave that on, but you can change the time frames if you like. There are three categories. So packages. Changes made here will not affect automation. I'll talk a little bit about automation in a second. Cinnamon spices. What are those things? Well, like applets. Applets are these toys down here. That's one example. What about Flatpak? What's that stuff? Software Manager contains Flatpak software not Synaptic Package Manager. You probably want that on also. Block packages, we're not using any. The automation, I'm going to talk a little bit deeper in a second, but we're going to need to make sure that snapshots are configured. And I'll show you how to check for that. The only thing I'm not going to talk about is exporting a blacklist or packages. All right. And then um, the updates, I, I think you can just leave that on it. They're usually done automatically anyways. However, this last one here, the automatic maintenance, which is performed as root, the user root, on a weekly basis. That will remove obsolete Linux kernels and dependencies if you slide that on. Keep in mind, please read this line. This option always leaves at least one older Linux kernel installed, in addition to the one that you're currently using, and never removes manually installed Linux kernels. All right, that ought to cover right clicking. Now let's open this, clicking that with my computer mouse. We can do a refresh and this time you can see it's the same thing as me right clicking, but you can actually see dialog boxes. And you'll also pay attention to this line down here. It's an info bar. And you can see it's checking for cinnamon spices and flat pack. Anyways, up to date is what you want to see. If you do see some updates, uh, self-explanatory, install them. Starting at the top, we have the close window and quit. Nothing stupendous there. Preferences, automation. Again, let's cover this, turning this on. So if you design to flip this switch, you make sure your system snapshots are configured. What is that? It's the next item below that, right here. Which is what? Time shift. Time shift is a system restore utility. You were asked to activate that during your welcome screen when you installed your system. And hopefully you did. If you kept the defaults, the 
TimeShift is also the maintainer of TimeShift is also Linux Mint, but you will find TimeShift on other Linux distros. Generally, it uses rsync by default. If you don't know what rsync is, you can type in ma on rsync in terminal. rsync is a system restore utility. Sorry, rsync is a remote sync. I use it for making personal backups. I have even um, videos using script files even to get a little deeper dive. Or you can use also graphical rsync. And that this uses rsync and so does TimeShift. Sorry, grsync and TimeShift both use rsync. And you can use rsync also um, with script files because rsync is found under the hood of most Linux distributions. What is this thing actually doing? It's making system snapshots. So I can roll back the system possibly to 8.15 by doing a restore. Normally it keeps five of these. If you feel you need to reduce that number due to hard drive space, I don't recommend going below two. So that is time shift in a nutshell. And again, the maintainer is Linux Mint on that. I think they took over that job, I think in the last two years. So I think Tony used to run that. Never mind, let's move on. So software sources, there might be a time where you may want to change that. I'm going to log in here for a second. It's whatever the name of your user is. And you may have seen this dialog box if you right clicked on your panel bar and went into system settings and then I'll try to open this because that is the exact dialog, same dialog box. So where's the stuff coming from? Uh, it's mainly coming from Mint and Ubuntu. There's also Flatpak software and software manager, but I'm not going to really talk about the um, mirror for that. But the mirrors are basically just sites where you get software in case this site is busy. So you can get software from another site by clicking this if you're not aware of this. And depending on your network speed is however fast it connects. And you can actually hit apply and it'll go to that software mirror and then you'll see a little uh, blurb in here. It'll say update your package manager or APT cache. You perform that and you can just perform your updates like normal. If you feel that that's not working for you, then you can always restore the default settings. settings. If you click that, it puts Mint back in Ubuntu, just like you see it. So you don't have to worry about trying to remember where these links are but there are quite a few sites or mirrors in the world that people get software. Keep in mind, Linux Mint is used on planet Earth all over the place. And sometimes having a mirror closer to you is faster than some of these. And now I'm gonna move on. So that was software sources. Moving into view, we have some options you can turn on. These are default. I don't recommend turning that off and it is, you can turn it off. Now I'm going to talk and open about history of updates. This may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I can tell you for myself and others, it's invaluable information is when things are updated, some things may go wrong one day or two. I had an error and I actually made a video about that with software manager for Linux, Linux Mint 22 regarding flat packs and the thumbnails and I traced it down to an update that was done. So let me show you how to read this. I'll pick on line two. So obviously the date self-explanatory, 2024, 831, and there's the time frame. Type is package and the, in this case, it's an email client, Thunderbird, and the old version and new version. Okay, here's one for Chromium, it's a web browser. Okay, that was also done today. And you can see that it's going from this version to that version. Went from 127 to 128 and, and change. So as I scroll down, I see older dates. You get the idea now. History of updates can also overwhelm some people, but it's good to have this kind of information. All right, so Linux kernels. I talked about this earlier. Automation. So Linux kernels, let me just stick on the screen for a second, is that's how this will first pop up. So when we 
talk about turning this on, automated Linux removal of kernels, then we can talk about this screen also at the same time. All right, LMDE6 does not have this option, by the way. Only Linux Mint 22 and uh, anyways, the 22 series. So I would highly recommend a digital snapshot of this you know, using your smartphone or camera or maybe even doing a screenshot and put that on a USB stick as long as you understand this or handwrite it down on a piece of paper because you can get into the advanced options and actually boot the older kernels in here. So how do you read this? Well, this is the series of the kernel, a 6.8 series Linux kernel. The kernel is the heart of your system, right? Linux system. You're currently running a 6.8, in my case, .0-41. So that is considered the active kernel, the running kernel. However, I have 40 installed, 39 and 38, which I can reboot the machine and actually place it in 38 if I needed to do that for whatever reason. Now, if I decided to turn the automated mode on, it would get rid of these in about a week because I didn't manually install them. They were superseded. Manually installed kernels do not get deleted with automation. However, you can remove these also. Okay. So more importantly, you can just leave it alone. This is only for the folks that are concerned over hard drive space. Uh, but this menu will grow. As time moves on, they will go to 42 or maybe 45 or sometimes they skip numbers. You know, not everything like there's no 37 in here. If you noticed, went from 31 to 35. Anyways, so whatever this says is what you're currently running and the active kernel cannot be removed. Only the older kernels that you're not running can be manually removed in case you decide to do that. Information is the same thing as me right clicking and clicking this box. Showed that earlier because I've been clicking some things and more importantly, it's been keeping a track of this stuff. Now, we are now over to help. Welcome screen, not the same as your basic welcome screen. It's the welcome screen for the update manager. All right, you probably saw this when you first installed the system. Keyboard shortcuts, if you use them. Contents, I observed this earlier and I am kind of miffed actually that nobody has fixed this yet and uh, Mint's been out for almost a month. There's actually links in here. You watch and I'll point to one. I'll find one here in a second. It says software regressions. You find another one in here. Different types of updates. You don't see a thing. So hopefully the Mint team is working on this. I saw something really similar in the file manager for the Mate desktop, which was also blank like this. Kind of interesting. That's why I do videos like this. So Mint Update, another name for that is Update Manager, and this is 6.1.5. Thank you for watching.